my induction motor generator which was an improvement upon the first one which you'll see in the first video that I made if you haven't seen the first one I'll kind of go over it briefly again for those who haven't basically what I have here is an induction motor just a standard 120 volt AC induction motor you might find them on you know air compressors or any you know table saws or anything like this this particular one's a quarter horse and without modifying the motor in any way we're turning it into an AC generator um, which is going to be driven by this gasoline engine. The only major difference between this one and the previous one is, and the previous one, if you saw it, this is used as a motor to start the engine and it is also used as a generator. Since I have a recoil starter on this motor, there's no need to use this motor to start the engine. And it's also not powerful enough to start the engine. Um, but I got much better results with the stronger engine because it could pick up the load better. Basically what we have here is a bank of capacitors. And how this works is this gasoline engine will turn this motor. Any residual magnetism within the uh, rotor of this motor is going to be passed on in extremely small voltage to the capacitors. The capacitors then will send that voltage back to the motor and the process will keep happening and eventually you'll get a field that will energize in this motor which will keep charging the capacitors. And uh, you'll, it, it happens in a split second. but it's And this motor will continue to charge these capacitors. So basically your capacitance which is the total number you know, of capacitors, you know, which may be more or higher, it'll vary depending on the motor itself and um, depending on the capacitors used. You can use small, big, basically what I've done is just taken a bunch of small capacitors out of old motors, anything that had a run capacitor. Only use run capacitors. Start capacitors and DC capacitors, no. But it sees this as one big capacitor. The system does not see each individual capacitor. These capacitors are all wired in parallel. The uh, where the AC power would normally enter the motor would enter into the capacitors. Basically the, the direct wire from the motor to the capacitors. And your outlet, which is where you draw your power from, also goes on those capacitors. So think of it kind of as a battery, and this is an alternator. It's not really, but think of it as that. This charges the capacitors. You draw the power off the capacitors. Pretty simple. Your frequency, which is your 50 cycles, your 60 cycles, is determined by the RPM at which this is spinning. Um, also, the voltage is slightly dependent upon that. Like, for example, if you have you've set it to 61 cycles and you dump a good load on there, this slows down a little bit. You'll get a little bit of a voltage drop, which, and also your frequency will drop also, which could be corrected by slightly increasing the RPM of this motor. will bring that frequency back up along with your voltage. Overdrawing will discharge your capacitors, which will cause this field to collapse. You'll take the load off the system. The only way you can get this to start generating again is to remove all of the loads, wait until usually a second or two, sometimes a little bit longer, and this will eventually start to uh, generate again, in which case you can dump your capacitors on. Basically what I have done here is take, just added one at a time and applied various loads and kept going until I reached a certain point. If you overdo it, you'll either start to go backwards or you can overheat the motor and trip the thermal protection inside, which is what I did, which too much capacitors. And that's probably not a good thing, so you can overdo it. Um, I'm going to fire this thing up real quick and do a quick demonstration. So 
right now I'm going to set my frequency. So I'm going to put my voltmeter to uh, the frequency section. And I'm going to slowly turn up the RPM of the engine until I get about 60 cycles. Usually I go to about 61, 62, because as soon as you dump the load on it, it'll drop down to about 60. basically how this induction motor generator will function. And the reason it's running straight pipe is because I obtained this motor from a garbage can and it ran real crappy with no muffler. It didn't have a muffler on it when I found it. So I put that pipe on there and it helped. Still should have a muffler though. <laughs> 